so Vint, from the old days of the creation of the internet to now, what's happened and sort of what's, what's surprising to you? Tell us a little bit about how you see the evolution of the internet. Well, Bob Kahn and I, of course, uh, are often asked, did we imagine what we have now? And, and the honest answer is not exactly. But we actually did have a lot of experience with many of the applications that are common today, way back then in 1973 and even before that. Uh, we built a lot of this on top of experience with the ARPANET, which was funded by the uh, U.S. Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. So where we are today is about 20% penetrated, about 1.3 billion users, so the chief internet evangelist at Google, that's me, has another 80% of the world to try to convert. Uh, we need a lot more internet access all around the world, and we need a lot broader bandwidth access to the internet for everyone. And the reason you and I are talking today is there's an initiative called Internet for Everyone, uh, which is intended to highlight the need to have broadband facilities everywhere, not only in the U.S., but elsewhere, especially in the rural parts of the country where often there is little or no broadband uh, access. And the reason that broadband is so important is that it enables a wide range of applications. The Internet was designed with no particular application in mind, in fact, and that was important. It simply uh, carries uh, packets from one place to another. And that simple service, on top of that simple service, virtually anything can be built. So what do you see today? You see web pages, you see blogging, you see videos uh, uploading and downloading, uh, you see uh, people uh, chatting and twittering and IMing and whatnot. You see all kinds of applications that are uh, more or less um, independent of the way the network functions. All they do is use its packet carrying capability. So uh, we're worried, frankly, in the United States especially, that we are inhibiting our own innovation and creativity. We're not creating jobs that we could create if there was broadband access everywhere in the country. Could that be solved by WiMAX or by cabling or by telcos? or how, how could that be solved in the next 10 years? Well, the real answer is that there's no one particular technology that necessarily is the best solution everywhere. The highest speed solutions tend to be fiber, but there are places where broadband wireless may turn out to be the most cost-effective way of delivering high speed. Or even satellite, although uh, synchronous satellites have a delay component to them of a quarter of a second up and down because of their location. Uh, medium Earth orbiting satellites, on the other hand, have uh, very small delays, 30 milliseconds or so, in which case that might be another uh, potential kind of solution. What I believe we're uh, looking for, uh, certainly uh, I am anyway, is, is to find as many different broadband solutions as possible so that they can be evaluated for their cost and deployed in places where they're most effective. You know, I spoke to Bob Metcalf, um, and he told me that he believes that online video, in a sense, is environmentally correct, or that it saves energy. Could you talk about that a little bit? Bob and I haven't discussed it, but I think we probably would agree that you can substitute telecommunications for transportation. Uh, it's a little tough if the time zones are, are sufficiently diverse, but for people who are a few time zones different, that actually works pretty well. Uh, and with high enough bandwidth, again, you can get very good quality interactions. Uh, companies like Cisco sell a telepresence capability, but it, it's beautiful and it's wonderful and it's life-size and it's expensive. Yeah. It's about $300,000 to outfit a room. Uh, those costs will come down with time, and I'm, I, I agree with Bob that uh, you could substitute uh, telecom for uh, uh, transportation. But there's something else we can do, too. We can use information technology to calculate our use of the uh, petroleum products that we need by optimizing the routes that we drive or fly uh, or, or ship. And so here's another opportunity for computers to contribute by making more efficient use of the available resources. Uh, one last question. You know, we, we're covering uh, video in a big way. Did you anticipate that video would be a big part of the internet, and and how does that challenge the tubes, and how could that sort of grow or, and bandwidth? You know, talking about these big files in particular. Well, let's start out by observing that many of us were doing experiments with video over the internet in, in the late 1970s and early 1980s, along with the voice over the internet. So uh, that wasn't new, but the quantity is new. The, the internet has scaled up substantially. 
uh, although scaling is now its biggest uh, threat. We need new address space, and that's why IP version 6 is important. Uh, I th what I'm foreseeing, frankly, is that video will be used in download mode more than it will be used in streaming mode as time goes on. If the capacities of the net get high enough, you can download video, you know, like a, a gigabit per second would let you download an hour's worth of video in 16 seconds. Kind of like what happens with iPod, where you download music faster than you could listen to it. So I anticipate that a lot of video that people will watch will have been downloaded uh, and then played back uh, whenever they want it, in sort of TiVo style. Uh, perhaps even more important though, internet is not taking advantage of broadcast media. We turn broadcast media into point-to-point -point links, which you see with Wi-Fi, for example. What we could be doing is rethinking some of the protocols so that if you have a broadcast medium, you actually use it to deliver the same thing to a large number of people at the same time, which is what television and radio do. It's very efficient, it's very effective for delivering the same thing. So if 65,000 people want a particular movie, then you broadcast it. Don't send 65,000 separate copies. Uh, if two people want a copy, it might be perfectly sensible just uh, to deliver that to them as a file transfer and let them play it back. The cost of storage is so low, the cost of digital processing is so low, that doing things in real time may not be necessary anymore. And so I'm anticipating a shift in the way people use video. I'm also expecting them to see video as an interactive medium, which means that advertising in that medium will have to change. Instead of being a uh, a, a something which is forced on you just at the, at the moment when the uh, scene gets all exciting. Instead, I think people will want what they have now in, in the uh, Google world where they can decide what uh, advertisements to watch or not. I think they're going to want the same kind of control in the video medium and it's possible to give it to them. You know, next year we'll have a new president, we'll have a new Congress. What should be on the top of the agenda? Well, the principal one is getting policies together that will cause uh, more broadband to be rolled out everywhere in the country, and that means providing incentives for people to invest in the infrastructure. It may actually mean a re-regulation of some aspect of the Internet in order to assure that there is either competition or fair access to underlying broadband resources. In some countries, for example, the broadband provider is required to provide a, uh, a wholesale access to broadband re uh, services so as to allow multiple parties to compete with higher level applications, which may in fact produce a, a larger revenue stream than the basic bit carrying. So that's worked out pretty well in England, it's worked out in Japan, it's worked out in New Zealand, and so on. The U.S. is far behind in terms of uh, its regulatory posture. It's still very hands-off, and although that's tempting, uh, I think as a uh, nostrum it has not worked out very well. So that's a big, a big issue is the broadband capability. The other one is getting IP version 6 into the Internet so we don't run out of address space. And after that, it's all a question of people inventing new applications.